Hello, this is Dr. Robert Gish. I am presenting today primary biliary cholangitis diagnosis and management. But specifically, we're going to talk about what it means to be a responder or non responder. Here are my disclosures. I would like to remind you that liver tests as part of the liver, liver panel include liver enzymes, AST, ALT, alkaline phosphatase, and GGT. These are not liver function tests. Bilirubin, direct bilirubin, is the best liver function test. And this includes albumin and INR. BBC is a chronic progressive autoimmune disease. A number of factors are involved with the onset and perpetuation of this bile duct injury. PBC phenotype includes an age, it's usually older than 45 years, female to male gender ratio of nine to one, positive antimitochondrial antibody in 95%, which means we can avoid liver biopsy in 95% typically. Immunoglobulins IgGm are elevated, MRCP is normal, Liver histology is classic. As I mentioned above, liver biopsy, liver histology is required in maybe five to 10% of patients. There may be a coexisting IBD, specifically celiac sprue. Laboratory tests, key markers and elevated alkaline phosphatase. But I order GGT in all of my patients. I call uh, and order a total bilirubin and specifically a direct bilirubin. The total bilirubin is greater than 0.7. Natural history of PVC includes this attack on the bile ducts. Cholestasis may begin early during the asymptomatic, definitely during the compensated and decompensated stage. You're going to see uh, rising bilirubin and direct bilirubin uh, during that interval. There are three pillars of PVC management. This includes um, stratifying risk and treatment with ursodeoxycholic acid as first line therapy. We're gonna be assessing for biochemical response, specifically alkaline phosphatase, talking about UDCA responders. Those are individuals that definitely have a response of alkaline phosphatase less than 1.6, seven times upper limits of normal or 180 international units. But at this point, I'm basically stating that a responder and those individuals who have a normal alkaline phosphatase, and we'll give you data on that shortly, and inadequate responders, elevated alkaline phosphatase on URSO, I then would add OCA, a second line treatment, and consider referring those patients for clinical trials. We're going to be monitoring enzymes, function, platelet count, elastography as part of our ongoing care. In patients with cirrhosis, specifically of elevated bilirubin, portal hypertension, varices, splenomegaly, dilated portal vein, that is best managing in an expert center. And these patients are at increased risk for liver cancer, so they should undergoing surveillance, which is ongoing testing, as well as screening, typically at stage three disease for esophageal varices, and then determining follow-up endoscopic surveillance. Managing patients actively includes managing pruritus, fatigue, dry eyes, dry mouth, bone health, and other coexistent autoimmune diseases, including thyroid disease, with ongoing management as per guidelines and expert opinion. Ursodeoxycholic acid typically improves alkaline phosphatase, GGT, AST, ALT, total bilirubin if elevated, and specifically direct bilirubin if elevated, you can see changes even inside the normal range for total bilirubin and direct bilirubin, which I find interesting and would support there's a therapeutic response even inside what would be considered normal by laboratory testing. There's an improvement of survival and liver transplant-free survival. It can delay the development of esophageal varices, delay histologic progression, improvement in cholesterol, and decreases in IgM. This is the odds ratio or the improvement or benefit, decreased death or transplant if the little circle is left of the line 
And you can see combined analysis of three major studies also shows a clinical benefit from the statistical analysis. This is looking at the natural history of PBC. You're going to be definitely seeing within the short-term data that are, is presented here, aversa deoxycholic acid having an improved survival, but you start to see a separation also at that six to 10 year time point in non cirrhotic patients. Survival rates, looking at elastography in PBC, and I do a baseline elastography in all of my PBC patients, score that level of liver stiffness, help that in prognosticating, but I also use that stiffness to determine if somebody is responding or non-responding, specifically progressing, on ERSO therapy, and I'll be doing the same in my patients on OCA therapy. Higher APRI score, this is the AST to platelet ratio index, a free test that you can do online with online calculators. You lower the APRI score, specifically at this cutoff of 0.54, better the survival. This went out to greater than 10 years. So in summary, ERSO improves liver disease survival and decreases the need for liver transplant. Normal alkaline phosphatase equals a normal lifespan. This is very important information from the GLOBE study. There's been no consistent benefit on fatigue or pruritus. A little bit more on ERSO in terms of detail here. You can look at the probability of survival on ERSO and patients who move from placebo to ERSO and these analysis. This decreased alkaline phosphatase was associated with improved survival. Decreases in bilirubin was associated with improved survival. Verso, as I mentioned before, was associated with delay of progression of histologic stage, decreased risk for varices, and improved liver transplant-free survival. This, all this data and outcomes was tagged back to improvements in alkaline phosphatase and normalization of alkaline phosphatase. A little bit more on inadequate response. There's a lot of detail on these slides looking at different uh, definitions with specific cut points that include alkaline phosphatase, uh, AST, bilirubin, GGT, and looking at scoring parameters that are continuous that are much more modern now would include the UK PBC, which has an online app that I find a little difficult to assess as well as the GLOBE study, which is the easiest online calculator. At 12 months, you're gonna be scoring bilirubin, alkaline phosphatase, albumin, and platelet count, giving also at baseline that patient's age. All right, so let's talk about treatment. Versa deoxycholic acid and OCA have been approved for the treatment of PBC. Verso is first line, OCA is second line. There's been some heterogeneity in treatment efficacy in various clinical trials, specifically with ursa deoxycholic acid, but the large OCA trial that uh, has been presented to the FDA was part of the label with long-term follow-up, also using surrogates and alkaline phosphatase uh, and specific um, small studies with histology uh, as projecting to have a clinical benefit. Dosing here for ERSO is highlighted at 13 to 15 milligrams per kilogram per day. OCA is going to be given in combination with ERSO. The patient tolerates ERSO, but can use, be used as monotherapy in individuals who don't tolerate. Uh, Budesonide, uh, I'm going to state, has not shown the benefit. Bezofibrate and small studies with phenofibrate have shown uh, in combination with ERSO also have a marked benefit, but the grade of evidence is lower and the grade of recommendation is lower due to the smaller study size. Some proposed clinical care standards for PBC. Make sure you're excluding other etiologies for cholestasis, including drug-induced liver disease. You're going to be starting ERSO, identifying patients at risk for progressive disease by lack of alkaline phosphatase response or showing progressive disease by elastography or other measurements of say portal hypertension or liver synthetic dysfunction. Monitor quality of life, refer for liver transplant if patients have MELD score greater than 15. Manage uh, proactively vitamin D, vitamin A deficiency, uh, calcium supplementation, 
uh, patients at risk for osteoporosis, has osteoporosis or progressive osteopenia, further supplemental medications, and the dendronate family would potentially be used for bone health, look for overlap syndrome, and potentially manage patients with more than ERSA or OCA if they have features of autoimmune hepatitis with either steroids or budesonide, uh, azathioprine, or mycophenolate. Further on long-term management is liver testing every three to six months, TSH every six to 12 months, DEXA scan every two years, monitor for other autoimmune conditions. We've already discussed assessing vitamin A and D levels. You may need to administer vitamin K in cholestatic patients with prolonged INR. I recommend a baseline EGT at F3, and then an upper endoscopy every one to three years of cirrhosis or the Mayo risk score is greater than 4.1. Liver cancer surveillance with an ultrasound. And I use a triple liver cancer biomarker panel that's FDA cleared and calculate a GALAD score in my patients with cirrhosis. So in summary, PBC is the most commonly diagnosed, and sorry, is most commonly diagnosed in middle-aged women, uh, female to male ratio nine to one, uh, taking good history, working up patients with pruritus, fatigue, elevated liver tests, uh, any patient with a cholestatic profile, elevated alkaline FOS and GGT, especially if greater than AST and ALT, would have an AMA. If AMA negative and you suspect PBC and liver biopsy would be indicated, first line therapy is ERSO uh, and second line OCA. Intolerant with er to ERSO, OCA would become your first or your monotherapy. Your target would be a normal alkaline phosphatase, according to the recent GLOBE data that has been assessed, which would return the patient close to or to a normal uh, actuarial lifespan. Make sure you evaluate for alcohol-induced liver disease and NASH in your patients as well. For unmet needs, you still have some patients who have progressive disease, some patients who don't normalize alkaline phosphatase, and there are data that's emerging uh, on salaldepar as it enters phase three studies, and also bezafibrate, which is available internationally, fenofibrate that's available in the US. I'd like to give acknowledgements to a variety of individuals who help uh, educate me, educate my patients, educate the community, the PBC Foundation, PBCers, the ASLD and ESL Guidelines Committee. Thank you so much.